Hey, are you studying for your BCBA exam or maybe your RBT? Well, I'm studying for my BCBA exam after 13 years in the field before they change the requirements. So today I'm going to make a video for you discussing the difference between valid data, accurate data, and reliable data. Well, hey guys, welcome back. If you're anything like me, you know that data is really important when doing EBA because you, we use it to make decisions and insurance companies often ask for data to justify our requirements for kids. So knowing whether data is accurate, liable, valid can be really important, but these can be also confusing terms. So we're gonna go over them one by one today. So what is accurate data? Well, every date, every event, right, has a true value. Every data has a true value, which means the actual um, real true value of that data, like what it actually is supposed to be. So let's just say, for example, you're observing how many times a child got up out of a chair in a session. So if a child got out of his chair three times in a session, then the true value is three. So, right, it happened three times, and that could be for anything. So if data is accurate, it means whether or not it represents the true value. So if the therapist is recording data in the session and they get three, well, then the data is accurate because it's, it's, it's correct, right? It's the same number as the true value. If it's two or four, well, then it's not accurate because it's not the same value of the data. So that seems pretty straightforward. And there's a lot of things that can affect whether or not data is accurate. But, and we'll go over those in another video, but the important takeaway is that accurate is just determining whether or not the number is correct. So what is data that's reliable? Well, data that's reliable is data that's repeatable, meaning that you're going to get the same score. Now data can be reliable, but it can be inaccurate. So let's say, for example, there are two people that are observing um, the data, and let's say that really the child, got out of his, his, the child got out of his chair three times. Well, if two people observe it and they both got two, well, then it's reliable because it repeated itself. Both therapists got the same thing, but it's not accurate because the real number was supposed to be three. So another example of reliability is let's say you use a scale. So if you test yourself on the scale and you weigh the same thing, 150 pounds every day, well, then that data is reliable because it's repeatable. So it can repeat across people, it can repeat across times, but again, that doesn't necessarily mean the fact that it's repeatable, it's inaccurate. A scale may be accurate, maybe it may be inaccurate. Maybe you weigh 130 pounds and the scale is broken. So it's showing 150. So, or maybe you really do weigh 130. It could also be accurate, but reliability and accuracy are two different things. So validity, again, something can be um, invalid, but be accurate. So validity determines whether or not you're measuring what you're supposed to be measuring. So let's just say, for example, as a BCBA, um, you're creating a lesson and you want the child to echo colors. And so the child says red when you say red. Well, that would be a correct response. Well, that data is valid. A correct response data is valid because you're measuring what the, uh, you were intending to measure. Let's just say though, for example, the, ch um, the therapist is playing with a red car and the child spontaneously tacks and says red. The therapist is like, awesome, I wanna give him credit for saying this. So they mark down an echoic plus for um, a correct response for red. Well, now that data is invalid because you weren't actually measuring what you were supposed to be measuring. So it's important that data is reliable, accurate, and valid in order to make good clinical decisions. And there's lots of things that can affect whether or not data is all of those three things. We'll go over them in detail later on, you know, as we continue studying together. But I really hope this video has helped you. I know those were terms that I hadn't heard in a long time before it went back to the textbook. So like I said, I'm gonna be making these videos almost every day, as many as I can as I'm studying to take you along on your study journey with me. So I hope to see you soon on the next video and happy studying. Thank you.